Hello, crypto bros, and we got a lot of news for you guys. First of all, we're going to look at Grayscale about to sell $1 billion of Ethereum. We're going to follow that up with Ibit and um, their continuous large inflows. And let's not forget that we're going to talk about whether Solana is undervalued or not compared to Ethereum. And we're going to look at some statistics to actually back that up. So let's actually get into Grayscale selling Ethereum. They moved 1 billion, that's right, not 1 million, 1 billion to Coinbase. And that generally means the precursor to sell. Um, remember, they sold off a lot of Bitcoin when the ETF launched, and I think they're going to do the same thing with Ethereum, which is why I predict Ethereum will uh, go down for us before massively coming up. Still, I don't think it's a bad idea to buy now, but you want to hold a little bit of dry powder for after it dumps, maybe in two weeks or so when it finishes dumping or whenever it drops below 3K. If it drops below 3K, probably a pretty good pickup. But even now, it's probably a pretty good pickup because I do believe that it'll be above 5K within a month and a half or so. So Grayscale moves $1 billion in Ethereum to Coinbase Prime and have a U ahead of the US ETF launch, sparking market money, uh, speculation about future investments. Future isn't the next two weeks, maybe not a smart move. If they're going to dump a billion, they would move it to Coinbase in order to dump because they know that their customers are gonna dump them for other people because they're charging 2.5% management fee and everyone else is charging 0.25. And no one wants to point, pay 2.5 when they can pay 0.25. Huge difference and a lot of money over time. Grayscale's 1.101 billion transfer to Coinbase Prime on Wednesday has led some to speculate about the company's intentions. Market participants suggest a potential sell-off to reinvest in other assets. However, John Capina, managing partner at Nexus Digital and former associate of, and Co of CoinFund and BlackRock, dismissed these claims, assessing that Grayscale is unlikely to reallocate its Ethereum holdings. But if they're converting into an ETF and people sell their ETF because their management fees are ridiculously high, that's another matter altogether. Just remember what happened to Bitcoin when Grayscale converted to Bitcoin ETF. We dumped from 46000 all the way down to 38000 because Grayscale offloaded so much of their um, Bitcoin ETF. So buyer beware. Maybe hold some dry powder for when all of this is over because I still think Ethereum is a very, very strong buy. Secondly, BlackRock's IBIT uh, has raked in $527 million and the ETF notched its 12th day's inflows. That's $527 million today. I think it's the seventh largest in its history. Most, uh, all of the first six were in pretty much in the month of March, about a month and a half after the Bitcoin ETF launch. Net flows into Bitcoin ETFs are increasing and independent of Bitcoin's price fluctuations, said Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunas. So the thing is like the big institutions, big hedges, they're buying Bitcoin again. They know the price is going to go up. Yes, we'll have our ups and downs, but overall we are definitely going up. Uh, IBIT tr attracted 526 million point seven in the net inflows on July 22nd as investors appetite for spot Bitcoin funds continued to grow. And I think this is uh, some retail, but a lot of big institutional funds as well. Uh, the group of 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs just secured its 12th straight day of gains, collectively drawing in nearly $534 million in inflows. But the vast majority of that is obviously IBIT. BlackRock does actually control the space. Uh, Fidelity took place uh, took second place with 23.7 million, followed by Invesco Galaxy with 13.7 million. But yeah, a lot of people are buying BlackRock's ETF fund, 100%, and I think they're going to continue buying because they know that Bitcoin is a good investment, and they're going to do so regardless of what Bitcoin price is right now. I do actually think these are a lot of institutional buyers that are looking for the long term. So that's very, very good. And it suggests that... Uh, you know, in this fall, Bitcoin is definitely going to go up. And Solana may actually be undervalued because it surpassed both Ethereum and BNB chain index volume, holding 36% of the market, boosting SOL's price predictions. 
Solana has recently outperformed Ethereum and BNB chain in a decentralized DEX volume, now holding 36% of total DEX volume. That does not mean it has surpassed either one in TVL. Both BNB and Ethereum are solidly above Solana in TVL, I believe. According to DeFi Llama, the select Solana's DEX volume has exceeded the combined volumes of Ethereum and BNB chain over the last 24 hours. Despite Ethereum and BNB showing higher weekly increases, Solana secured the top position with a DEX volume of 2.24 billion, while Ethereum and BNB chain recorded 1.141 billion and 703.19 million. So Solana's volume is greater. Doesn't mean necessarily its, vol uh, its value is greater, but the volume is greater. There's more activity on Solana, it seems like, on, than on both Ethereum and BNB. Uh, the DEX volume in terms of like money, the DEX volume, like the amount of money they transferred is actually greater. The number of transactions is probably are also greater as well. So Solana is definitely kind of like taking over this market. But of course, it could actually be a lot of wash trading. We don't really know how much wash trading goes on in each platform. And if we knew that, the statistics might actually be different. A lot of Solana's volume is actually meme coins. But that's because, you know, they basically switched over from Ethereum because Ethereum couldn't actually handle all the meme coins transactions. Solana's TVL is also 5.29 billion, obviously trailing way behind Ethereum. But since more people are making, uh, are willing to make more transactions on Solana, that might uh, start changing um, soon. I know it's not going to overtake Ethereum this time, but I think like the ratio between Solana and Ethereum will actually start to favor Solana very, very soon. Maybe like Ethereum will have an up right after its ETF, but if a Solana gets an ETF, then watch out. It's definitely coming from Ethereum in second place. I think Solana, it might be undervalued when compared to Ethereum and BNB, but I also really think the better investment is some of Solana's ecosystem coins, but you do have to pick the right ones. But Solana's DEX volume is greater than both Ethereum and Binance combined. And that's something to think of when you think about which L1 to actually invest in. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.